Namaste my loves and welcome back to my channel and welcome to the ultimate backpacking guide. Today we're going to be talking about tips for booking hostels and staying in hostels, so just all around hostel tips basically. <laughs> First of all I'm going to speak about having an app on your phone. So I had booking.com on my phone and I used that pretty much the whole time and there was just the odd occasion where I went online and booked through a different website, maybe like Hostel World. I have done a separate video on this backpacking guide about what apps you should get on your phone before you actually leave, so check that out if you haven't already. I found Hostel World a little bit more expensive but booking.com, the good thing about them is if you book with them quite often you tend to get discounts like mini discounts on where you book and it will come up as you're searching and it's easy to book as well instead of having to go online every time at least the app actually remembers your details and you can just jump on search around dead easy i recommend as well when you're booking your hostel check the facility so my first thing i would say is always make sure that they've got lockers because obviously if you've got things with you that are quite expensive then i really recommend just making sure that there's lockers and always having a padlock with you because a lot of the time the lockers don't lock themselves and also the other facilities that may not be so essential but I found really made me feel a lot more comfortable in where I was staying. Picking hostels that had curtains. Now you don't have to do this because a lot of the time it's quite easy to actually just find somewhere that doesn't have one because it's a lot cheaper. What I'm saying by curtain is like in your bunk they actually come with curtains sometimes or blinds. If you can't find a curtain what I did is I just used my towel or I actually had this big sarong but I could only really use that if I was in the bottom bunk. So if you don't have curtains and you're in the top bunk then you're just not going to be able to put a curtain up basically and also the other essential things i'd look for if you're booking a hostel is having a plug socket right by your bed because one you know that when you're charging your items in the night they're safe because they're right by you and two it's just a lot nicer as well if you are actually out in the day and you want to charge some things whilst you're out you can charge them and cover them up with your bed covers it just makes you feel a lot more safe and secure with all of your expensive items really I'm just gonna do that because i can see someone i know also when booking your hostel i recommend booking a maximum of three nights now this is only really for somewhere like asia let's say because there was a couple of times i booked hostels and to be honest like i booked a hostel for three nights and i i really wanted to move but i didn't because i thought oh well, i've spent my money on it but they're so cheap in asia you might as well if you don't like it you might as well just leave that's what i'm saying I, I just i recommend that if i went back i would have actually just left if i didn't like it because no more than three nights and if you're staying in a hostel for like seven days and you don't like the hostel it's not great seven days is quite a long time if you're only going for like let's say a month right that's a whole week out of that month so i just recommend booking your hostel personally i'd only book two nights but three nights maximum i would say and if you don't like it just leave and the good thing about it, if you're just booking the three nights usually when you're staying in a hostel you can book your two nights and then if you want to extend it's so easy to just go up and extend and they will do that for you in person so i recommend doing that don't overbook your hostels because trust me there's going to be something that you don't like i also preferred booking hostels that had communal toilets instead of private toilets in the bedroom this is because obviously if there's like six of you or eight of you staying in one bedroom and there's only one toilet then it's sometimes quite hard to get in there before everyone else if you want to shower obviously if you want to go to the toilet some people are a bit funny about going to the toilet if you're especially if you're, you're in a mixed dorm and you're a female some females are funny about going to the toilet when there's guys in the room it's completely up to you i personally preferred it when there were shared toilets so there would be like everyone would have their room and the toilets would be like female and male or it would be mixed but it would be like separate cubicles so just look out for it because i preferred that and i know quite a few people that i've met preferred that as well so look out for that too if you are a bit of a party animal and you like to have a drink and do lots of things with lots of people then i recommend booking a party hostel i did stay in party hostels quite a few times can't really say it's my cup of tea i did tend to feel quite out of place in a lot of them but i always made friends so it's fine but it's just party hostels is really honestly for specific people they are a lot of fun you can have so much fun but if you want to wake up with a hangover every day then you go for that but a lot of the time you'll wake up with hangovers the hostel's always really loud at night because everyone's up drinking every single night pretty much and you'll find that people aren't as quiet in your room because a lot of the time people are coming in drunk at all sorts of hours a lot of the time people do tend to have sex in the room in party hostels because people are drunk so if you don't like that don't stay in party hostels just saying because i've been there done that i don't know i just personally if i was going to go traveling again i don't think i'd pick party hostels because it's just not really my cup of tea but i did have fun in them so i don't i can't say i don't i don't regret it because i did have a great time and i did meet some amazing people but yeah up to you
what I would say as well is I would go onto the app and I would look for a good communal area. So an area where you can chill, catch up, like meet people, a nice area to eat. A lot of the time it's actually quite good to book a hostel that has breakfast in the mornings, free breakfast, because you tend to meet quite a few people that way as well. But yeah, good communal areas is great because you can chill, read a book if you want to, go on your laptop, just meet people. Sometimes that hostels have like games that you can play. But also, if you tend to like go out with a big group of people from your hostel and come back, it's quite nice to sit and chill in that area with everyone you get you meet everyone that way and also i want to say as well staying in a smaller hostel you always tend to meet really cool people because it's a lot more smaller so it's a lot more personal whereas when you're in a massive hostel it's so hard to meet people when i was staying in australia i found it so much harder to connect with people because there were so many people and everyone kind of had been there for a long time and people were living there for me anyway i found it a lot more harder to connect with people because it was quite overwhelming for me to be around that many people. I think I'm a bit of an introvert to be honest. If you're kind of like me, you're a bit introverted but you like to be social at the same time. It's weird to say that but smaller hostels are so much nicer because you meet really nice people and it's a lot more personal so really recommend that. Being a female I actually quite like staying in mixed dormitories because I found that staying in mixed dormitories I'd always end up meeting people a lot easier whereas if I stayed in a female dorm it only tended to be when I just wanted to relax <laughs> because the mixed dorms are a lot more louder let's say they're they're louder you know obviously I'm not slating you guys out there but messier because <laughs> guys are just naturally messier okay I'm gonna say it they are just naturally messier in hostel rooms so anytime I stayed in a female dorm everyone in there were just like really quiet really respectful really clean everyone else might have their own personal experience of that and actually if any of you have had really horrible experiences in hostels please leave it down below because I'd love to hear your stories from any hostel craziness or some amazing memory from your hostels please let me know down in the comment section below I know some really funny stories and I've heard so many funny stories from other people and it would be great to hear yours as well when you get to your hostel as well I really recommend you check for bed bugs before you sleep in your bed because I've seen people that have been bitten by bed bugs and it, it looks savage. Basically what you want to do is you want to look at each corner of your mattress so pull up the sheets and stuff look at the corners of each of your mattress and if there's like black dots and little which looks like little red dots and black dots the red dots are probably blood and the black dots are the bugs you definitely don't want to stay in those beds. They tend to go to the corner of the beds I don't know why I was very lucky I never got caught in a bed with bed bugs but I know people that did and they, they were said it was horrible the thing is with bed bugs as well is if you've had them and your bag your backpack has been on your bed and your clothes your clothes are going to have them as well so you need to like deep clean everything and it's just an absolute pain in the ass and uh, to be honest as well a lot of people will tend to be like oh you've got bed bugs or you've had bed bugs like stay away from me that's just the stories that i've heard so just look out for bed bugs when you go to hostels and lastly these are just a few little things that i would say are essential to have with you when you're staying in a hostel and i always recommend having an eye mask having either earplugs or headphones because earplugs never really worked for me so if people were snoring or being loud in the room I would just put my headphones in and listen to music and I'd always try and get a bottom bunk because bottom bunks just felt a lot more cosier and you could put a curtain up like I said before if you wanted to. Oh and one last thing if you feel like you want to save some money as well always ask if you can work to stay in the hostel because you can actually do that. I know some people that ended up working like two hours every other day or something, they would get like their bed for free or their breakfast for free. So it's definitely worth asking if you wanna save some money and you just wanna stay there for a little bit longer, work to stay would be quite a good option for that. Cause there's some hostels that you love and you don't wanna leave. So that's a really good idea. I'd actually do that if I went back. I would actually do that <laughs> so anyway that closes up the video for now thank you so much for watching i really hope you're enjoying this backpacking guide and i really hope that it's helping you thank you so much for watching my loves and i'll see you in the next episode peace